Did you know that high levels of one essential hormone lead to nine out of the top 10 causes of death in the US? By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what that hormone is. Most importantly, you'll also know the steps that you can take to make sure that your levels of this hormone stay low. You can reduce your risks for the nine diseases most likely to succeed in killing you. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those resources are about hormone optimization. A gigantic health crisis has really ravaged our health. It's devastating not only the US, but really the entire world. The mortality rate in the US is currently holding rock steady at 100%. It's been that way for at least 245 years, never budging a single digit since this country was founded on July 4th, 1776. We're all gonna die. In spite of that fact, we're not all gonna die the same way or at the same age. Let's take a look at the leading causes of death in the US for the year 2020. That's the most recent year for which we have statistics. The Journal of the American Medical Association laid out these leading causes in March of 2021. Those stats show that about 2,712,630 Americans died in 2020. Of those, about 398,483 died from all the other causes besides the top 10. So that's about 15%. That means the 10 leading causes of death accounted for 85% of the deaths in the US in 2020. If we dig further into those statistics, we need to first take a look at number four, on the list of the top 10 causes of death. The fourth leading cause of death was accidents. So that means car accidents, plane crashes, accidental drownings, accidental shootings, uh, falls. Accidents are pretty self-explanatory. Americans died in accidents in about 5% of all deaths. So if we add up the number of accidents with all the other causes of death, the ones that aren't in the top 10, that leaves 80% of all the deaths with causes in the top 10 list, so let's say the nine out of the top 10, all but one of those top 10 leading causes of death relate to metabolic disease. Said another way, nine out of the top 10 causes of death are related to hormones and metabolic disease. So in terms of numbers of people, that works out to 2 million 176,576 people who died from some form of metabolic disease in the US in 2020. We kind of struggled to wrap our minds around that staggering number, 2.2 million people. But if we gather together all the people who died last year from metabolic disease comes in at number five, largest city in the US, right behind New York, LA, Chicago, and Houston. Metabolic disease refers to any disease that involves the way your body uses energy. Well, some of the factors that contribute to metabolism might include your hormones, things like insulin, your diet, the way your body takes in what are called macros, uh, glucose in the form of sugar, starch, carbohydrates, lipids, which are also a form of fats, proteins. Metabolism involves exercise and how you burn that energy. It involves body composition, whether you're underweight, you're just right, you're overweight or even obese. So here's the list of the leading causes of death in order. First, there's heart disease. Well, I've said this in a bunch of other videos, heart disease kills more people than any other cause. About 23% of deaths in 2020 were caused by heart disease. Cancer of all kinds clocks in second. Breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic, leukemia, lymphoma, lung cancer, there's a bunch more. All those cancers combined to kill about 22% of the Americans who died in 2020. Well, after accidents at number four, stroke comes in at number five. Stroke is followed by chronic lung diseases. Those are things like asthma and emphysema and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. That's number six. Alzheimer's disease takes the seventh spot then diabetes appears at number eight. Influenza and pneumonia at number nine are uh, acute infections. And then kidney disease rounds out the list at number 10. 
Remarkably, several of these diseases show themselves to be kind of similar to one another. Clogged arteries impact both heart disease and stroke. Breathing problems make chronic respiratory disease and influenza or pneumonia both dangerous and scary. Heart disease, Alzheimer's, and type 2 diabetes affect older Americans a lot more disproportionately when you compare them to younger people. But there's one thing that stands out as common to all nine of these leading causes of death. They're all rooted in something called insulin resistance. What that means is that your body makes plenty of insulin, but that insulin just doesn't work very well. As you may probably know, insulin's job is to move glucose from the bloodstream into the cells where it's used as energy. There's that metabolism thing again. As we get older, the toll of decades of bad eating, that means high sugar diets and inflammatory fats, highly processed foods and a lot of snacking. We have a lot of poor sleep over that time. We have no exercise. All of these over the years take their toll on our glucose metabolism. In other words, our cells learn to resist insulin over time. If we say that another way, many of us already have diabetes. We just don't know it yet. Type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. It's just gotten a bit more severe. Insulin resistance is just a slightly milder form of diabetes that doesn't technically qualify as diabetes based on some arbitrary numbers. Your body doesn't metabolize glucose all that well when you have insulin resistance. Insulin resistance affects nine out of those top 10 causes of death. That means one of the biggest risk factors for heart disease is type 2 diabetes. Many types of cancer cells thrive in a high glucose environment. Dr. Jason Fung's book, The Cancer Code, goes into some detail about something called the Warburg effect. Cancer cells basically prefer to metabolize glucose over other energy sources. Insulin resistance, that comes with increased blood glucose, actually encourages cancers to grow. Stroke results from blood clots and clogged arteries in the brain, which are related to insulin resistance. Respiratory diseases involve whole body inflammation. That's made a lot worse by insulin resistance, which makes those respiratory diseases even worse. Alzheimer's is so closely related to insulin resistance that it's often called type three diabetes. Diabetes itself, as I mentioned, is insulin resistance, just taken to a higher extreme. People catch infections like influenza and pneumonia all the time, but they don't always die from them. The people who do die from these relatively common infections are those with metabolic disease, especially those with diabetes, heart disease, or chronic respiratory disease all of which are influenced by insulin resistance. Kidney disease most often results from diabetes and years of high blood glucose, as well as high insulin, that damage the kidneys. Well, you may have noticed that I've kind of been skipping number three. The number three cause of death in the US for 2020 was COVID-19. 345,000 people died from COVID in 2020. That's about 13% of the total deaths. Most of those people who died from COVID were metabolically unhealthy. Dozens or maybe even hundreds of studies show pretty conclusively that if you have high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, that means problems with fats in your blood, and a, a little side note here, high cholesterol kind of oversimplifies lipids. If you're overweight or obese, if you have heart disease, type two diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, or just plain insulin resistance, also known as prediabetes, or almost any other metabolic disease. If you struggle with any of these metabolic diseases, you're going to fight for your life with COVID-19. That means you're way more likely to end up in the ICU. While you're in the ICU, doctors might place you on a ventilator. Metabolically unhealthy patients die much more often from COVID-19 than healthy patients do. Decreasing your metabolic disease, especially insulin resistance, offers major protection against the severity of COVID-19. Insulin sensitivity makes you much less likely to die from a COVID-19 infection. 
Now that doesn't mean if you're insulin sensitive, you won't need to concern yourself with catching COVID-19. That's an entirely different thing. A metabolically healthy person of any age can catch and be infected by COVID-19. They might not get as sick with it as a less healthy person, but they can also pass it on to other people who may not be so metabolically healthy as they are. As I mentioned, insulin resistance makes people more vulnerable to respiratory disease. That includes those chronic respiratory diseases like asthma and COPD, but it also includes respiratory infections like influenza, pneumonia, and COVID-19. The root problem of nine out of 10 leading causes of death is insulin resistance. Because of that, the number one hormone optimization priority should be insulin. What steps can you take to protect yourself from metabolic disease and its risks, including COVID-19? Well, you can optimize your blood glucose and your insulin levels to maintain insulin sensitivity or reverse insulin resistance. That looks like reducing carbohydrates, avoiding sugar, starches, and most grains, eating a high quality real food diet free of processed foods, inflammatory fats, and toxins. Practicing intermittent fasting can increase your insulin sensitivity at a minimum if you stop snacking, especially late at night. Government guidelines and physician groups have talked up several small meals throughout the day for the past couple of decades. Those snacks all day long have not helped us avoid insulin resistance. Snacking causes your blood glucose to spike and fall over and over again several times throughout the day. This pattern of high glucose followed by insulin spikes and then dropping glucose causes cravings for more sugar and always leads to insulin resistance eventually. If you increase your exercise and get plenty of quality sleep, you'll be able to help optimize your five metabolic risk factors. BMI or basal metabolic index, that has to do with your weight, your blood glucose and your insulin, your blood pressure, your HDL or high density lipoproteins, your triglycerides. Well, unfortunately, you might struggle to optimize your insulin unless you get all your other hormones optimized at the same time. I'm talking about thyroid, estradiol in women, testosterone, vitamin D, and a bunch of others that help you maintain or regain insulin sensitivity. They protect you from the very serious, very dangerous, very real risks of insulin resistance. In order to optimize all your other hormones, you might want to ask me for a referral to a hormone optimization specialist. I know lots of these specialists all over the US and some in Canada and some other countries. Click the link that says find a specialist. If you are a hormone optimization specialist and you can help patients optimize their insulin and all their other hormones, I'd love to connect you with patients who need your help. Click the link that says join provider database. I looked at my list today and I think I had 17 patients that I still need to get back to about providers in their area. If you're a provider, I can't guarantee I'll find you patients in your area. And if you're a patient, I can't guarantee that I'll find you a doctor, but I'll give it my best shot. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and get notified anytime I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon.